How's it going everybody? Welcome to the next episode. As you can see here, we've got the pedestals set up for the cap and chairs going in. We've already taken out all the legwork on trying to determine where they need to be, what height, all that business. It's already been done ahead of time in an earlier episode. So now it makes it real easy. You see the little pedestals here. The trick is you'll just center it as it's supposed to. Grab your measuring tape and we'll center it up. I think I left about an inch on each, so I'll measure that up a little bit better. That's pretty close right there. And then same thing on this little guy over here. Uh, one inch, one inch, give or take. Now I don't I think this is the first time you all have seen these pedestals. Normally, the ones that I've worked with before are pretty cheap. These are really good aluminum and they've uh, essentially used it looks like some pretty some pretty good high-end uh, nylon here um, could technically be another material but anyway the, I guess the big thing here is deciding you know which way do you want these knobs because the, they uh, essentially change your ability to get to the telescopic piece of it here so I think what we'll do I'm likely gonna just face this forward so if you were just to reach under your seat, you could do that. But I mean, technically, now's the time where you could you could change it. But this thing is pretty neat, pretty darn neat. I mean, it allows you to change the height of it here, and then you can you can essentially tighten it, so it keeps it nice and sturdy. I want to say, um, if you're curious about which pedestals I'm using here, I want to say these are about like 80 bucks a piece. And uh, I've gone cheap before and bought the non-telescopic ones that raise up and down and all that business. And I don't think I was very happy with them. But these are just, they're built really well. It says uh, at the bottom, uh, Springfield. But I'll get you the exact part number if you're curious. Just throw a comment in the comments field below and we'll, we'll look at that. All right, so obviously I went and trimmed around the uh, ski locker here. I want to also show you what I'm doing with the ski locker as well because we need a install that that's going to get carpeted uh, as well and then as i mentioned in the earlier episode we still need a little bit more carpet up front and underneath the uh seating area here so we'll get to that in a later episode but since we got all the uh carpet dried up here and might as well continue on with the next piece of the the rebuild so here's where we are let's go ahead and flip over and look at the ski locker and i'll show you what i got going on there all right take a look here so this is the uh, ski locker. I know it looks a little uneven, but it's just because there's a, a little post in that corner for where the hydraulics go. But you can see we pulled off the old carpet and it left a lot of residue. And this is going to be essentially a really uh, high traffic area. So we want to make sure we get a good amount of adhesive uh, adhesion to this. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to wire brush this. You can see here I've already made a larger hole for the new type of hardware. What was on this originally was a very unusual type of um, like clasp that keeps this thing closed. It was like a, like a keyhole essentially. And I looked far and wide to try to find another one and I couldn't do it. They actually had a different design uh, available. That's what essentially made me want to enlarge this. And I'll show you what I got. All right, so while I look for this clasp that I had, I'm going to go ahead and continue on and actually take the wire brush here and wire brush this whole entire area clean. One, uh, one could say that you would do this on the interior, but if you take a wire brush to clean up all this residual pieces on your polyester resin or epoxy, you're going to have some major problems. So uh, they do have like a nylon version of this if you're trying to get some of the bigger pieces off. On the interior part of your boat so anyway since we're on um, I believe this is aluminum yeah since we're playing with aluminum here uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and wire brush it nice and clean uh, they do make a uh, brass version of this so if you're looking at trying to not inject ferrous metal into your aluminum which will rust then you can get this in a brass and they do have an, one with nylon bristles as well so keep that in mind as you're doing your uh, projects, you're not taking pieces of uh, steel 
and injecting it into the aluminum because it will create some rust and if you're using like maybe a lighter color carpet like maybe a white I don't know why but if you were maybe that rust would show up eventually on the white cause staining so anyway uh, that aside I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and wire brush all this nice and clean let's open on the inside here see so kind of what I'm hoping to achieve here is a, a cleaner look and then you can see where the hydraulics were over there there was some rust I used some um, I think it was I think it's like phosphoric acid on it and it uh yeah i got rid of the rust in some of those areas from the uh the old lift that was in there but it left some really odd residue so i'll need to go and clean that off and then you can see along this long edge we need to clean that and uh probably around the edge probably clean that as well since this will be an area that you'll see inside the boat and we want it to be nice and shiny considering we're putting the, the new carpet in there so anyway i'll go ahead and uh, wire brush all this down and we'll uh we don't have carpet to cover it today but we'll probably go ahead and carpet it uh here in a few days once they get the new carpet in okay that's a good amount of wire brushing hit it with some acetone as well just to make sure everything was um you know oil free and got all these little pieces of look like old remnants of some sort of carpet glue. It's not contact cement, but something else. Anyway, I had to use a uh, razor blade to get that off. And then we cleaned up in here real good. So, I like it. Let's go ahead and install it in the boat. And we'll work on putting the fasteners in place too. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to set this thing in place. Very carefully here. Hopefully, it sits down perfectly. Nice. All right. So, if you don't know me by now, you do, or will. We use stainless steel screws on everything we put in. So I'm going to go ahead and start fastening some stainless steel screws around here. All right, looking good so far, though. I tell you what, what do you think? And here in just a second, we'll go and put those pedestals on too. We'll kind of make this uh, a joint video where we do both. But uh, yeah, it's coming come along pretty well so far. Okay. We got all of them fastened in. Take a look here. Yep. All right. Let's go grab the hydraulic lift that goes on there and snap that in place. Okay, so take a look. This is originally what was in there, and I looked everywhere to try to find if I can get a replacement one of these. Because it, it has a key, number one, and I don't have the key anymore. But that's how you would close that. And essentially, I couldn't find it, and the bottom part was it was a ferrous metal. I couldn't find it in stainless, so I ended up getting rid of this. So glad I finally located that one. And this is actually what I replaced it with, or I'm in the process of replacing it with. It's a pretty cool little locking device. Found it off of Amazon. Hit me up if you want the link to what it is. Yeah, pretty clean, right? The whole idea is you just lift up and you twist this, right? And then close it back down, yeah pretty well made I checked the nut on it and it does have the markings for stainless so everything uh, passes so far with that one but that's what I'm gonna put in that's why I cut the two inch hole on it so that's what it's replacing and then if you saw in an earlier video I'd been using a uh, stainless lift yeah but I was pretty particular about using stainless steel so this is gonna be I had bought this before I uh, started getting into buying the stainless uh, lifts that I use for the uh, engine cover. So, I mean, it's at wood, but I, I can tell, I mean, it's, I'm not really overconfident that this is going to stand the test of time, especially in a ski locker where it's all moist and everything. So we'll use this as a test one. The moment I start seeing any kind of rust on it, I'm getting rid of it, but don't, in your case, if you got the ability 
to get the stainless steel ones, just get them. It's these things are not going to last. And I knew the ones that I pulled off originally had rusted a little bit, so I'm probably still going to order a stainless one anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and install this one for the point of the video. This has a little bit different type of snap, so you'll put a flathead and lift that up, and put the flathead and lift up underneath un underneath this one as well. Okay, just like that. And then you want to install it where the rod is facing towards the bottom of the boat. So let's go ahead and open this and install this sucker here. All right, first one goes here. Just make sure we have it set up right. So it looks like the rod's gonna have to turn. So we'll put that in there. All right, and we'll flip this around. Goes all the way up. There we go. Let's take a look. It's okay. I mean, I don't think it. Let's see how well it lifts up. I guess it kind of holds it in place. Yeah, pretty good. That's what, that's what it had originally on it. So I'm not overly excited about that, but it is what it is. And we're gonna wait to put this on until we put carpet, probably even before we go and tighten it. But that's the whole idea here, right? Is that it'll go like that. And then if you wanna lift it up, you just you would go and grab it and pull it up just like that. Pretty neat, right? Okay, so let's call that good for now. And let's work on securing these two pedestals in place. and. Uh, we'll, we'll put the seats in uh, last and make sure everything looks good. Okay, so as you're aware, when we go to attach these pedestals here, we use nothing but the best of the best in terms of stainless steel lag bolts. So the this is about a quarter inch here, actually probably a little bit more, and then the pedestal on top of that is three quarter and then half inch. So we use an uh, inch and a half could use one inch but you see how much brunt these things take as you get off and on off and on and, and think about it too if you use a shorter bolt every time you go to take off on the boat you know your weight wants to go take off with it so there's gonna be a lot of stress on the front might as well go with the good ones I've seen and I've, I've seen a lot of people go and replace these with thicker ones over time as the, the wood rots and whatnot so best thing to do is use a nice good lag bolt so anyway there you go so uh it should be you can see i've had these sitting there for a little bit and i i had a a black line if you saw my earlier episode of exactly where this needed to be but since there's carpet on here now it's not as easy to see exactly where this needs to be so what i did and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to keep it as straight as i think it should go and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this seat and we'll put the seat on there just to make sure because once you fasten this thing down and there's a problem with the alignment on it you're done I mean you if you look at the size of these things you're gonna punch this type of hole in the top of your boat which I don't like doing and then you got to move it around oh you better double check so if you got your seats already um, definitely check it out before you put these in because once you sink these in you do not want to have to move them all right so anyway let's go ahead and put the seat in place all right there we go so still got the plastic on it because i'm trying to keep this thing as cherry as possible as you can see yeah and it looks pretty good what from what i can see around here just as we put it in place all right so one of the things that i wanted to do was to be able to rotate this thing completely around if needed. You can see that shifter right there? That's where it's going to get kind of curious if we can make it all the way around or not. And we can. Okay. So that passed the test right there. That's really what I was looking for with the alignment of the seat is to be able to make sure you would be able to flip this thing all the way around if needed. So let's take a look at the pedestal down below. Looks good, looks good. 
pretty happy with that. All right, let's um, let's see if we can very carefully pop this off the seat and um, secure it into place. Okay, so everything checks out. Let's go ahead and sink some of these in. Could use a washer. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but kind of up to you. So anyway, I'll go ahead and sink these into place and we'll get started with uh, putting the uh, other seat on. Okay, so got our drill. We've got our 516 stainless steel flat washers. Let's go ahead and fasten these in place. Go all the way around, double check, make sure everything is good. So you may want to use an impact to screw in here, but personally, I don't like to take that chance. The, the hammering motion that takes place when you hammer these in, I don't want to take a chance of damaging anything so I'm going to actually just use the regular uh, screw function. I do have the hammer style but I'm not going to do it in this case. So anyway, let's go ahead and screw these in slowly but surely and hopefully everything turns out good. Alright, so I got the front and back bolts in. I can tell you right now this sucker is sturdy. Whew, okay. So let's go ahead and do two more on this uh, each side and we should be good to go with this. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks so far. Pretty neat. Anyway, alright, let's get going. Okay, so that is all six bolts fastened into place. Tell you what, that is pretty darn sturdy quick check if you want to make sure they're all tightened down properly let's try to spin the washers see we got one that spins so we'll go ahead and tighten that one down a little bit more okay so let's call this one good and we will transition over now to this side and secure this uh, pedestal in place next that shouldn't be too tough but same function, this one will probably be easier to, to confirm it's good because this side over here you got to make sure the controls and it, it goes around the steering wheel. This one pretty much, you just need to make sure it, it can swing past this side, which we already did. But, you know, we've got, we've got a little bit of play here around, so you want to make sure you're centered pretty good on that. And then... Make sure this is good and straight as well. So, yeah, it looks good. I'll go ahead and throw the chair on there real quick and make sure. Okay. And the obvious thing you want to do is make sure it can spin all the way around. Looks like it does. Ample space around there. Check the back side. Yeah. Good. It's kind of hard to see with the bag there, but it does spin all the way around. All right, and let's check for leg room. Okay, so pass all the tests. Let's go ahead and install this pedestal now. Okay, looking good, looking good. I'll get that black mark off. It's a permanent marker. Anyway, all right, so pedestals are on. Let's go ahead and attach these chairs and give it a little test okay and that is that both seats are installed looking good now what we'll do is we'll wait for the carpet to get in we'll finish that up finish up the carpet a little bit back there along the sides and we'll move on to carpeting the ski locker and we'll test this thing get this thing to turn on because keep in mind I have not turned this thing on since the motor was originally taken out. So this thing may not even start. Now we all know that it will, but it's kind of neat knowing that it hasn't started since May. Stay tuned to the channel. We'll catch you on the next episode. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you thought it was helpful. More to come as we continue on with this project. And we are on the final stretch, so stay with me. 
catch you on the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. Take it easy.